Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be bringing you a 311 with one of my favorite palettes and that is the Urban Decay Naked Cherry. I received a request to do three looks with this palette and I know when you look at these colors, you wanna run for the hills, but trust me when I tell you this palette can be actually very wearable. And in fact, the second look that I'm gonna be featuring today, I think you're gonna be surprised that I actually used this palette. But overall, I do love this palette. I do have a complete review with swatches in a different video and another look using it, and I will list that in the description box below. But for today's video, I'm bringing you three new looks, and as always, I include the cheek and lip combo for each of the eye looks. All right, let's go ahead and jump into look number one. Starting off this look and the next, I'm using the Smashbox 24 Hour Photo Finish Primer. And then going into our palette, I'm going to use this first shade, which is called Hot Spot on an E50. And I'm going to mix a little bit of Caution, which is the next one to it, just to kind of create a bright brow bone highlight, but not too light. So just placing this right under the brow bone to the top of the crease, then going in with a Morphe M504 and the shade Feels. This is a matte pink, kind of mauve pink shade, really making sure to dust off that brush because I don't want too intense of a crease color. So I'm just buffing that all through the crease up towards the brow bone, and I'm gonna layer it again just going slowly. You do wanna make sure that you don't go in too intensely with these colors because they are pigmented. Going in now with the Morphe M433, I'm going to go in with the shade Devilish. Again, another matte shade, and this is, a, I would say, like a deep raspberry color. It's so pretty, but again, can get out of control fast. So I am just carefully, slowly building this up in the outer corner, really covering about the outer third of the upper lid there and then going above the crease slightly. And now taking that same brush, I wiped it off and going in with a little bit of caution on there and going right along the edge. So I'm not going down into that raspberry shade, but just using this to blend out the very edge of that because I want the pigment to remain, but I want that edge to be very soft and diffused. Now what I did on the left eye there is I started off with the shade Young Love using my finger. That is a scary looking shade, but don't worry. This is one of those looks that's going to look scary until it's done, so hang with me here. So I'm placing this across about three quarters of the upper lid, not going quite to the inner corner, but close, and just packing that on with my finger, making sure I cover the majority of the lid. And then I'm gonna go in with the shade Bang Bang, and this is such a pretty pinky, peachy shade. And I love layering this over that Young Love shade just to dial back the intensity of that. Now I'm gonna go in with the E60 and more of that shade Bang Bang, and I'm gonna coat my brush and then spritz it with a little setting spray. This is the Gerard Slay All Day Setting Spray in Peach. You can use whatever you have, but just look how beautiful that makes that shade go on. So it just smooths it out, gives it a little bit of a metallic finish. And then I'm gonna take my M433, a little more feels, and I'm just going to softly blend this through the top edge of that shimmery shade in the crease, just to make sure there's not a harsh stopping line there. Going in with the Urban Decay 24-7 Pencil in Demolition, I like to use a deep brown instead of black because I think it just makes it a little less intense. So I'm going to start about halfway across the lid, and then as I go out towards the outer corner, I am going to just wedge it up slightly. This doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to smudge some shadow over the top of it. With the Sedona Lace EB21, First, I'm going to just soften that line with the brush before it dries. These do set pretty quickly, so you wanna do this, do one eye at a time when you're doing this. And you can see I brought that pencil about 
two thirds of the way across. And then I'm gonna go in with the shade Devilish, which is the one we used in the outer corner, go over the top of it, and it just creates kind of a deep dark plum at the lash line. So it softens that liner. And then we're going to go in with the Urban Decay 24-7 liner in Love Drug on the lower lash line. This is such a pretty bright purple shade. I love it. Now using the Morphe M432, I'm going to go in with a little more of that devilish shade just to set that liner in place and kind of soften the edge of it. So I'm going right into the roots of the lashes and then I'm going to wipe that off and go in with a little bit of feels below that. So just to again soften the edge and kind of smoke out that lower lash line just slightly. Now I have lots to clean up. So I'm using my almond oil and Q-tip. I'm gonna leave this clip in here so you can just see how I do this. When you get to the outer corner, just go up towards the brow and you can see it just lifts the shadow. I'm leaving some of that shadow there, but I want to make sure that the outer corner lifts up towards the brow. I applied my mascara for these three looks. I'm using the underwear for lashes and Milani highly rated mascara and then the difference from the left eye to the right is I did this. So I'm going to first take the e.l.f. smudge brush and a little bit of first feels and I'm just going to further soften that lower lash line and then I'm going to use a little bit of caution as you go in towards the inner corner. And again, this just kind of softens the look slightly. Now on the inner corner, I'm going to use my pinky and go in with hot spot and this is going to just first brighten that up and then we're gonna go over the top of it with that shimmery shade which is called Turn On. This is such a pretty shade but on its own sometimes it's not quite bright enough so I like to mix it with that white shade and then use a brush, this is the E30 from Sigma just to make sure that it's blended into the crease colors and into the inner corner there. And that completes our eye look for the moment. Then going in with blush, I'm using the Profusion Blush 2 palette and I'm using the shade Lovejoy. It's super bright and so I'm going to tap off on the back of my hand. This is the E4 brush from Morphe and you can see I'm just slowly tapping that on my cheeks. And you can always add more but it's a little harder to take away so I like to go slowly, tap it off on the back of my hand first and then apply to the cheeks. For highlighter, I'm using the Milani Strobe Light in the shade Afterglow, and I'm using the MAC 140 Fan Brush and putting this along the tops of the cheeks, the bridge of the nose, and I will also do it on the Cupid's Bow. And this is just such a beautiful neutral champagne highlighter. Next, I went around the edge of my lips with the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. And now for lip liner, I am using the NYX Suede Matte Lip Liner in the shade Whipped Caviar. And I do really love these NYX lip liners. And this is kind of a dusty rose, dusty mauve shade. I think it's going to go really well with this look. And then for my lipstick, I'm going to actually use one that in its name, it doesn't sound quite right, but this is Peach Blossom by MAC. And this is such a pretty kind of warm pink shade. So sometimes the name doesn't always <laughs> describe the color. But then I decided after all that, I needed to do one more thing to the eyes. So I'm going back to the E60 and a little bit of turn on, and then I'm going to spritz my brush. And this was because I just wanted a little bit more brightness on the inner part of that lid. So it wasn't just a solid kind of pink eye look. So this just added a little extra dimension and brightness there. And I think that is the key to keeping you from looking too tired with shades like this. And here is our finished look. So this is the kind of most colorful of the three looks, but I still felt like it was really wearable and I loved how this came together. Now on to look number two. Again, I started off with the Smashbox Photo Finish Eye Primer and I'm using my E50 and a combination of those first two shades the hot spot and caution. And if you are paler than I am, you could probably just go in with hot spot. 
but I feel like on its own for me, it's just a little too bright. So then on the Morphe M504, this time I'm going in with the shade Juicy, which is more of a peachy shade. It is matte, and I am just very lightly buffing this all through the crease up towards those brow bone highlight shades that we put on and layering this a couple times and then going in with the Morphe M506, I'm going in with Privacy. So I wanted to keep this look really, really daytime appropriate. So that's why I'm going in with such a small brush and just working this in the outermost part of the outer corner of the upper lid there and just bringing kind of ever so slightly into the crease. So I'm creating almost like a C out here rather than a sharp V and just blending that onto the lid ever so slightly and then out towards the outer corner. So just take your time with these shades, take your time to build up slowly and then you don't get too much intense color out here. So again, you can see I'm layering it again, but just tapping my brush in barely and then applying to the eyes. That is the key with this palette, I feel like. Now going to the Morphe M433, I'm just going to buff the edge of that dark shade and then go back in with a little more of Juicy on that same brush and use this just to soften the edge. Again, I'm not going down into that dark color, but just wanting to blend the edge. Now I'm using the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in Metallic Taupe as a base. On reflection, I think you could have skipped this step because I end up wetting my brush and it gives you almost the same look, but I just wanted to see if this would help with the intensity, and it does, but I don't think it's necessary. So now I'm going in with the E60 from Sigma and that shade turn on. This is actually one of my favorite colors in the whole palette. And first I'm applying this dry over the top of that cream shadow stick. And you can see it does have a decent amount of pigmentation and shine applied just like this. But if you want to step up that intensity, you pull out your setting spray and spritz your brush and go over the top of it and you'll see what a difference that makes. Also by wetting your brush, it does prevent extra fallout, glitter fallout from these shades. So just a little tip for you. All right, now using my finger, I'm gonna go in with the shade Ambitious and I'm just using this to slightly kind of blend that outer corner color onto into the lid shade and then using the M433 to blend out the crease. For my liner today, I'm using the shade Double Life on the lower lash line. This is such a pretty kind of shimmery, bronzy brown. It has a little bit of warmth to it. So using that about two thirds of the way across the lower lash line. And on my upper lash line, I'm using the Mad Max Brown from Kat Von D. This is the liquid tattoo liner. And I'm going super close to the lashes and the inner corner. And then I am going to wing this out slightly. I chose to do dark brown because again, I want this to be a little less intense and more neutral. And I just love this fine line. It helps darken the lash line. And now it's time, of course, to clean up. So this just, again, ensures that that outer edge is clean and sharp and crisp. And then I applied my mascara duo. Again, curled the lashes, fixed the hair in a little crazy funky way. And then for blush, I'm using the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush in the shade Seduce. And this is such a beautiful shade. I forgot how much I love this. I'm using the E4 from Morphe and it is just that perfect neutral, kind of warm neutral blush shade. And I love it, especially on my skin tone. I just need to remember to use it more. Now you could go back to the Milani Strobe Light in Afterglow for the highlighter, but today I chose to use the Maybelline Master Chrome Highlighter, and this is in the shade Molten Rose Gold. This just has a hint of kind of a peachy rose gold um, shade, and I just thought it looked beautiful with our eye look. Now to finish off the eyes, I'm gonna go in with the shade Turn On on my pinky and use this in the inner corner just to highlight that, add a little extra shimmer and shine there, and then just 
use a tiny little bit of hot spot over the top of that just to further brighten it and kind of mute it down just a little bit so there's a differentiation between that and the lid shade. Around the edge of my lips, I use the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, and now for a lip liner, I am going in with the Urban Decay 24-7 Lip Liner in the shade 1993, and then I'm going to follow it up with the Urban Decay Cream Vice Lipstick in the shade Liar. So I love this 1993 shade. It is a neutral nude warm brown, and the lipstick, I think that was really the first time I had worn that shade. It is so similar and just loved the feel and the formula of that. And here is our finished look. So this is that neutral look that I think most people would be shocked to know that you used the cherry palette for. But I love it and I think was actually my favorite look. Now going on to look number three, I started off with the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base in light, and you can see it just gives a nice little bit of coverage to the lids. Because I'm doing an all matte look today, I wanted to make sure that I had all of my veins and discolorations covered, so that's why I'm using that. So going in with the E50, I'm using Hotspot and Caution again, and you're gonna see me apply a little more of this. So I'm really coating the brow bone highlight to into the crease, and then later we're gonna put some of that on the lid. For the crease, I'm using the shade Feels on a Morphe M504, and really just gently buffing this all through the crease and bringing this out past the outer corner, just making sure that edge is really nice and soft and blended. And again, just going to just take my time building this up. I don't want it to be too intense, but I do want it to be a really nice soft wash of color there. And then again, going around the edge of the eye. Now I'm taking this smaller brush. This is the E27 from Sigma and I'm using Bing. I'm doing this because I want to have a little more control. This is such a bright shade and I didn't want it to overtake the look. This is a great brush for just placing the color and lightly buffing the edge of it. So you're not gonna get a really big blend with this brush, but it does help you just kind of control real intense colors. So I'm placing it and then bringing it onto the lid. So I'm covering about just a quarter of the outer corner with this. Again, wedging it kind of into the crease. And then I'm going to go in with the shade devilish and darken that up just slightly because I'm not going to use the dark shade privacy. These are the only two shades we're going to use out here. So I'm using those two shades just to deepen the outer corner. And then I'm going to take my Morphe M433 and the shade feels. And now I'm going to go again just around the edge of those colors and then I'm turning my brush kind of almost vertical and very lightly, I mean, using very little pressure, using that to blend softly through the crease. So this is the trick. If you're having trouble blending, lighten up your hold on the brush. Now I'm going in with the E60 and the shade Hot Spot, and this is going to be our lid shade. And you can just see how nice and pigmented that shade is all on its own. It really brightens up the eye. And then I'm gonna use that E27 again with a little more Bing and use that just to buff the edge of that shade into the outer corner there. And then look forward and you can see I need to bring that up just slightly because I have hooded eyes out here. And so you just wanna look forward and blend the top edge of it so that you can actually see that shade when you're looking straight ahead into a mirror. And I took the M433, blended the edge, and now it's time for a liner. This is my itty bitty rock star liner from Urban Decay. This is just a deep plum purple. I'm using this along the lower lash line and going about halfway and then smudging it in with my finger. Then using the M432 from Morphe and a little bit more of that shade. And I'm just tapping that into the lashes and then kind of winging it out. I'm giving myself a guideline because I'm gonna go in with liquid liner. This again is the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Mad Max Brown. 
and I'm keeping this really close to the lashes and the inner corner and then I am going to wing it out and don't worry this will look still a little harsh even though it is dark brown I am going to soften it with a little bit of shadow next but just wanted to lay this down kind of as my guideline and to darken the lash line so just keep it almost in the roots of the lashes specifically and then I'm going to use the Sedona Lace 561 and a tiny little bit of privacy right over the top of that liner and over the top of the edge and I'm using this to just bring out the edge of that winged liner slightly and this is also going to soften the top edge of that liner so just take your time I did not want this to kind of really get into the outer corner I'm just using this to soften it and then I used a little bit of devilish on that same brush on the inner half into the roots of the lashes I liked this shade rather than privacy because I just thought it was a little bit softer and then after all that was done just needed a little more hot spot just to make sure that inner corner was nice and bright so added just a little bit more on the lid cleaned up along the lower lash line there and again cleaned up the wing the outer edge making sure that's nice and crisp and then for my blush I am using this bounce and blur blush from Bare Minerals. This is just a little sample size. I'm using my finger and this is the shade Mauve Sunrise. It is so pretty and I actually really liked this formula. I was quite impressed and then I'm just taking this is a Luxie brush. I will list it down below and I'm just tapping that in to the skin. Now going in with just a little more hot spot on the E30 from Sigma, making sure that inner corner is nice and bright. Again, this helps keep you looking from looking tired, wearing pink and purple eyeshadows. And then for highlighter, I'm using the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in the shade Highlight 01. I just love how soft this highlighter is, but it looks beautiful, especially on mature skin. And I'm putting this on the tops of the cheeks, the bridge of the nose, the cupid's bow. Went around the edge of my lips with the Max Soft Ochre Paint Pot. And this time I'm using the Urban Decay Lip Liner in the shade Liar. And this is more of a muted mauve, kind of a nude mauve color. So this is what I use when I'm kind of going more in the pink family with my lipstick. And my lipstick of choice is the new Stila Shine Fever Lip Vinyl in the shade Speedway. And if you saw my new Lip Loves video, you will know I love this. And so here paired with that liner, it's pretty plummy looking in the container, but it just comes off as this really nice deep rose. And I love the shine and feel of this lip color. And here is our finished look. Even though I use those pinks and raspberries because I kept it matte, I feel like this is still very wearable. And that wraps up this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye.